Hey guys, Jay here. Thought I'd make a quick video for you guys today. I did my first ever simultaneous five axis cuts the other day. One is right here. It's just a simple little kind of like rocking back and forth. This is just a flow tool path where the software tries to keep the tool normal to the surface of the part. And then there's this part right here. And this is kind of what you probably think of more as five axis. This is a full five axis simultaneous swarf cut. And you can see it's a little bit choppy, admittedly. There's so much to learn about 5-axis. I just wanted to kind of share a little bit with you guys today. I'm just gonna ramble a little bit, talk to you a little bit about the things that I haven't really seen when I start looking online. When I bought this Haas VF2, this is a VF2 SSYT with a TRT-160 rotary table. I bought it for a very specific reason. We make mold cores, and the cores that we make have like a pattern in them, and the only way we're able to make the pattern now is through EDM work. And so we have to go and we have to cut a bunch of electrodes, like a rougher and a finisher, and we have to program this, and we have to do a bunch of, it's like three setups. It's, it's a tremendous amount of work. And the five axis rotary for full simultaneous will allow us to put this pattern into the cores far easier. And so that's why we did it. We're programming with HSM Works or Fusion 360. I bought a Fusion 360 license a while ago. But then I started working with the guys over there at Next Gen Cam who do like, they're like an Autodesk reseller and they do like custom post processors and stuff like that, which for the super high-end machines is pretty much a must. But uh, this is not the most capable 5-axis software, but it can get the job done as, as I'll explain here in just a little bit. But there's a lot of information about these things that are like, it's not super clear. You can read the details in the manual. And so there's two primary functions on my Haas VF2. That I, that I paid a lot extra for, right? So dynamic work offsets, DW, DWO, and tool center point control. DWO is really, it's really designed for three plus two positional work, and it's G254. Traditionally in five axis machining, you'd have your platter, and you'd have to have like your center point and your platter, and you'd have to design all your, all of your tools and, and stock would have to be like placed dead nuts inside cam, right? And if it moved, you'd have to repost and change, shift things around. Well, now this next generation of five axis equipment, not, I'm sure it's not just Haas, but that's what I'm familiar with. You have your, you have your, the center of your platter becomes your X, X and Y. And then there's like an imaginary point in space that becomes your Z. This is called your MRZP, your machine rotary zero point. And when you engage things like G234, which is tool center point control for simultaneous five axis cutting or G254 dynamic work offsets for three plus two positional, your part can be anywhere on the table. It doesn't matter where it's at in cam, and the machine is going to is going to like modify the tool paths, and it's it's going to do all the math to to keep the cuts, you know, basically to give you the cuts you see in cam in real life, right? Collision detection is a whole other topic, and we're going to talk about that. And it's going to get its own video, but we are going to talk about that. There are some things that aren't super clear, right? So G two fifty four, G two thirty four. They can't be used together, right? You don't run, even though you may post out a job that has 10 different tool paths and one tool path may be positional, so you're using dynamic work offsets, right, G254, you won't be using G234 in that same tool path. The next tool that runs though, that may be like a flow or a swarf cut and now you're gonna use G234. G234, TCPC, all that does, it's very basic. You just take your G43, which is your tool length offset if you guys aren't familiar, Learning G-code is kind of a must once you start getting to like higher levels of, of capability. But you take your G43, you make it a G234 with the appropriate tool number, and now you can run full 5-axis simultaneous cuts. Now traditionally, you know, there's, there's like 2D milling or 2.5D milling. This is just traditionally where you have a contour, and then the tool follows the contour. You set the depth. It's just that simple. Then you have 3D tool paths, right? This is where the software can actually read the model. It actually knows what's in the model or you know, it can control you know, its behavior. But when you get to like full five axis simultaneous, it's a different animal, right? It takes a super expensive, sophisticated piece of software to really be able to read the model and, and have the, enough control over the tool and the machine to give you what you want. So what I found is that super high end pieces of software like, I don't know, Hypermill, Powermill, Full five axis master cam, work NC, NX, spree. These these pieces of software are really, if you're gonna be doing a lot of variations of parts, you're probably at some point gonna have to pull the trigger and bite, you know, bite the bullet and buy this super expensive software. 
But on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, you see guys that talk about how incapable Fusion 360 is and it's garbage and it doesn't have any five axis. And I would respectfully disagree. It's not the most intuitive and it's not the easiest, but I just have two words for you. Construction geometry. If you know what you want, Fusion 360 or Autodesk HSM works, which is what I'm programming in because I use SolidWorks. It may not do the very best job of reading the model or it may not have enough control over the tool to kind of allow you to select exactly what you want. But if you're willing to spend a little bit of time and create some construction geometry, you can get a lot done with this software. It's, there's, there's far more capable. It's a workaround. It's not ideal, but it's absolutely capable. So... So keep that in mind, and we'll, hopefully we'll do a lot more videos on this because there's just not that much content. It seems like when you start looking for 5-axis content on YouTube, there's really two types of videos, right? There's either very specific uh, tutorial videos for pieces of software, you know, whether it's PowerMill or HyperMill or whatever. There's these very specific tutorials, and then there's like, you know, the badass videos of them cutting, you know, motocross helmets and, and basketball nets, right? On some super high-end Hermley, right? So hopefully I'm going to take some time here as I kind of, my, my whole goal is now and has been just to share as much about what I'm doing with you guys, be as transparent as I can. I've got a, I've got a mistakes video coming. So when I, you know, when I blow out and do something stupid, we can all, you, you know, I've already suffered the pain so you guys can just sit back and laugh, right? It's all, everything's funny in hindsight, but in the moment, you know, you're tearing your hair out. So anyways, I just wanted to share this with you guys. One last thing before I let you go. Traditionally, when you're feeding in a three axis operation or two, two and a half D operation, you think about feed per minute. It's just, you know, you have your surface speed, you have your chip load, you have your feed rate. So you might think of 80 inches a minute. But when you start moving parts around and you've got this tool that's up here, feed per minute is kind of a clunky way to do it. And you can get some pretty choppy motion. And so there's something called feed per minute is like G94, right? But if you go to G93, which is inverse time feed, it's a big fancy word for just the, allowing the machine to do the math to kind of keep that feed rate even. And so it's kind of measured in strokes, which is, it is what it is, right? It's, it's above my pay grade, but I'm super excited to, I'm super excited to be making so much progress. If you'd ask me, I want to say it's been about 10 months now, nine or 10 months. Uh, actually, no, it hasn't even, it hasn't been that long. I think we got our super mini mill in June. I don't know, whatever. Let's just call it 10 months. If you'd have asked me 10 months ago, would we be doing full five axis simultaneous work? Would we have come this far, uh, this fast, like in this relatively short duration of time? I, would, I just honestly can't believe we've come so far so fast. I'm having a great time. I, I'd be lying to you guys if I told you that I didn't want to rip my hair out more often than not and that there this hasn't been a monstrous challenge, but there have been a lot of really awesome people that have stepped up to help me out. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. And stay tuned because we're going to do some more full simultaneous five axis cutting real soon. Bye-bye.